our bus conversion is almost done. The inside looks great, the outside looks good, but we can do some more upgrades, and that's what we're working on today. So since our bus is gonna be our daily driver, we need a way to tow around our trailer, so we're gonna be installing a trailer hitch. Hopefully today, hopefully it goes smoothly. Let's get right into it. So I got this Kurt hitch, and it's got a pretty good rating on it, 5,000 pounds, made in USA. I forget what model it is, but you can see it has a drop. So basically, instead of coming straight off the bar, it's below the bar. And I think that's gonna work better for us. Because our bumper hangs down a little bit, so like this is where it attaches to the frame. And I wanna make sure that the, you know, the thing comes out under the bumper, doesn't hit it, hopefully it all reaches. Here is the frame that we're going to be hooking it to. It's actually an extension. You can see they bolted and welded this section from here to here on to the uh, the rest of the frame. So this is just an extended part, but it's so solid. I mean, like I said, it's all super welded and bolted. So it'll be totally fine. There's some holes here. I'll probably have to drill my own holes, but I'll get it under here and just see what it looks like and hopefully it all fits. I think this is the model right here. Adjustable RV hitch. I think we put these on. Like this. It says put them on like the picture. Clamp it to the bottom of the frame. I'm gonna have to hold this side up, aren't I? Let me see. They say it so casually. <laughs> Hold it up and clamp it. I didn't realize you have to do this. Okay. I don't think I thought this through. Oh, hold it. Let me get under it. Oh, I'm losing. Hold on. All right, I think I got it centered up pretty good under there. So it's just clamped and centered. They don't say to do this step, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna mark where this is. Just in case I accidentally move it. Because we're gonna be drilling out the metal right there. They say to use the brackets as a template to drill these big 9 16 inch holes in the frame. But I found that the bracket was in my way. So I just spritz it with some spray paint so I could see the holes and I took the bracket down. So I know where the hole should be. I'm going to try to drill them out with this. Um, having the brackets in place would have been nice because it would hold my drill bit from wandering. These are coming out hot, Ash. But we did it. First hole is drilled. That was kind of smooth. Yeah, except for the my belly being burnt. It feels roasted. <laughs> Look at all this hot metal that landed on me. <laughs> Keep the shirt down. I can't even get this stuff out. Ew. I have metal in my belly button. <laughs> I need a magnet. <laughs> okay, why did I lay underneath it? Maybe I maybe I'll try to use this and just see if it'll hold the drill bit still. Okay. We got these brackets bolted on. These are just hand tight. Slid these uh, slid the hitch back through it, and I centered it up, clamped the ends so it can't move, and now I'm going to be drilling these out right here through the bracket through the bar on both sides. All right, I'm more protected this time. I tucked my sleeves into my gloves because now I have burns all over my arms. And I'll keep my belly out from under it. I'll do this other side first, but then I gotta go on the back side and drill through also. Oh, and so. then paint them again. Yeah. All right, we did it. Check it out, we got a hole straight through the bar, drilled out both sides. Looking good. Now, bolted together. So I got the nut on my wrench. I'll try to hold this 
on the back. You see it? Yeah. Okay, this is really cool. Look at we have a hitch on our bus. Well, the hookup, you know. This job actually went really easy. I was surprised how simple it was because I put it off being a little bit overwhelmed by the project because I've never installed a hitch before. It sounded complicated. It was easy. It was just drilling some holes and bolting it together. So it's done. I actually hit it with some black spray paint on the bolts, different places I drilled. Just want to make sure everything's sealed, it's not going to rust, and it's going to look good. I hope it's not too far under the bumper here. That's as far forward as I could bring it, so it's going to have to be good enough. And I'm happy with the height. I'm glad I chose this model. I was really torn between the two different models of the adjustable hitch, where one came out straight from the hitch, or from this bar, and the other one was down here. I think that's going to be better in the end. But that's only half the job. I mean, we have the hitch, but we don't have the wiring. So now I have to install the uh, trailer wiring hookup. So this is what I got for this job. Basically, I got this uh, electrical hookup. The connections are inside there. Seven pin and four pin. I got a bracket that it hooks to. This is the wire harness that plugs that in. We're gonna have to wire that up. And I got this mounting bracket, which will hook to the hitch for this to bolt onto. So you'll see all that. All right, I bolted the uh, bracket to the bracket and I had to use some huge washers because the screws were slipping through the holes. But we got that much done. Now I'm gonna put it on the hitch. All right, we got it strapped on there nice and tight. You can see the uh, worm gear clamp right here. I just have the uh, screw part on top and solid. So now we can clip this in. That was easy. And now we're onto the wiring. This is the last part of the job. So hopefully it goes smoothly. Like I said, this will plug right into the back of that connector. And these will hook up to the proper wires underneath. I'll try to show you guys. It's gonna be kind of hard and dark to show under there, but I'm gonna to try to show you what I'm gonna do. Underneath here, I have these wires. These, uh, these should go to all the uh, trailer stuff. Okay, I just went ahead and put two of these Metropack connectors on here. And basically, I split it into four and three because there's seven connectors. So this is the standard like four pin trailer connector. And this would be for the extra stuff if you're doing the seven pin. So now I think I'm ready to connect them together. So now that we got the wires all hooked up, uh, we'll have to neaten this up, but we're gonna get this plugged into here. So that's connected. I mean, it's done, essentially. All we gotta do is zip tie this up out of the way. I think this is looking pretty good, actually. Me too. Okay, guys, we're done. So that actually went pretty smoothly and I'm happy with how it came out. And now we can get towing our trailer with our bus and pick up supplies and all that kind of good stuff. So that's fun. So the adjustable RV hitch worked perfectly for a bus. I would definitely recommend it for any bus conversion. It's always handy to have a hitch even if you just want to put a bike rack on the back. Our bus luckily was already pre-wired for a trailer hitch more or less. It had all the wires going back there waiting ready to go. I went ahead and added my own waterproof connectors to hook the uh, trailer connector to the factory wires. But you don't even have to get that fancy. You could just use regular crimp connectors, some heat shrink tubing, anything, anything will work. Now some vehicles aren't going to have wires underneath neatly waiting for them to hook up a trailer hitch. So you might have to tap into your tail lights and just use a trailer light controller. But like I said, luckily for me, I had the wires there and it made it really easy to hook up. So the next part of the hitch is the hitch. So this is the best one we could find locally. It's not ideal. Let me show you. Well, I had to turn this around first of all, because it was the other way, but um, it was way too low. It just felt like it was riding on the ground. 
So we turned it around, but now it's too close to the bumper. Not perfect, but um, if we can find a different hitch, I might swap that out later, but we're gonna try to make that work. And this end is done. I put a locking pin on here just so nobody could unlock it. I don't know, came with the hitch. This is the last job on getting the hitch all hooked up. We're almost ready to start towing, but since I installed a seven pin connector on the back, I can tow a trailer with brakes. So I wanted to make sure I added a brake controller, so I picked up this kit. This is an electric trailer brake controller. So basically it's gonna be an adjustable knob that can adjust how, how much the brakes break. How do you explain that? I've been looking around. I think I'm gonna put the controller switch right here on the dash. So I'm gonna start drilling holes. Hopefully I can drill them with the steering wheel here. It's kind of an awkward, definitely an awkward spot to get to. Uh, I just don't know where else to put it on the dash. So that's gonna be where the controller is. And luckily this should be an easy job because behind my switch panel, I recall seeing a factory harness right here. This goes to the, ew. Tape? Yeah, it's all sticky and gooey. This goes to the brake controller for the brakes. So we should be able to just plug and play and this thing will be functional. Let me pop the dash, just make sure everything is going to be safe. I'm not going to hit any wire. Yeah. For better or worse, I drilled my hole in the dash. I hope that's a good spot for it. It's a tough situation because it's got to fit this long thing in there. And there was only so many places in the dash that I think it'll fit. I hope it'll fit right here. Now I just got to put the controller unit behind the dash anywhere. They say you can go anywhere you want. So let me find a good spot for that. So here's the controller. This cord should plug straight into the factory connector. Good. I pulled it down from the top down here so I could work with it better. This should plug into the other end. I mean, that's pretty much done. I think I found a spot to mount that right here to this block of styrofoam gonna go underneath the steering column it'll be close to everything so that's, I think that's looking good it'll go on just like that easy to get to if I need to and I got the wires hooked up let's get it back together so now we got to see if the switch is even gonna fit in this hole because it's so deep but I'm hoping it doesn't hit anything so I think it'll fit. This is gonna be the little knob. Which... All right guys, we got it finished up and everything's back together and looking normal. I'm not crazy about this placement, but it'll work and it doesn't look too bad. It has power, it probably works. I won't really know for sure until we have a trailer hooked up with brakes on it. This kind of controller is pretty neat because you can put the box anywhere and it has this little knob. A lot of them are kind of clunky. I like that style. It was tricky because that switch, like I said, was so long that I really had to find a good spot. And I even had to end up cutting a hole in the plastic behind the dash for it to fit. But in the end, it's all done. And while I was doing that, I took all this stuff out from under the dash and, and off the dash. And that's actually the controller from the uh, wheelchair lift. It's like a safety lockout for the wheelchair lift and the uh, advanced fast idle that's kind of built into that. I wasn't really using either of them anymore, so I said, let's just get rid of it. It's extra stuff in there that doesn't need to be there. So unhook that. We're gonna end it here. We got a trailer hookup. Now we're back on the road. We can use this bus to the fullest extent. Yeah. So thanks for watching, and until next time, take care. Bye.